come right out and say it. The idea that brown rice is healthier than white rice for you is not just a myth, but it's a dangerous myth that's actively harming the health of millions of people. I know we've all heard the incessant parroting in recent decades about brown rice being a healthy option, but for some reason it seems that all mainstream advice, especially in the health arena, is the inverse of the truth. In fact, the more philosophically inclined of us might be ready to point out that life seems to be a steady process of waking up to the fact that much of what you believe since birth has turned out to be a lie, where the world you were born into is built upon beliefs that are quite simply inversions of the truth. The great philosopher Balthazar Gracian put it simply, life's greatest trick is that we're born asleep and we die awake. Though admittedly, 99% of humanity likely dies asleep. So that's why it's paramount for us to stop making assumptions don't hold anything as a fact until you thoroughly examine it, especially when you hear the echo chamber of the unthinking masses repeating said dogma. That's when you should really question it. So today, I'm going to present my argument to you for why you should completely stop eating brown rice. You can reject or accept my evidence. The choice is yours. My aim is to get you healthy, full of life and energy, so you can rise up from the low vibrational prison that so many of us are trapped in. Hey, what do you got there, Peter? Rice cakes. Never had one, but somebody told me this is a really good way to start your diet. Food plays a major role in controlling the vitality of the human body and can either give you life or kill you. Every single thing that you put into your body either brings you closer to perfect health or further away from it. I refer to these things as activators and blockers, respectively. And I refer to that state of perfect health as thermo. We're born in arguably the most perfect state of health we will ever be in, barring prenatal development issues. Our skin is soft and glowing, we have boundless energy, we sleep soundly, endless curiosity and imagination with a limitless capacity for rapid learning. The plasticity of our brain is incredible when we're young and still in thermo. But over the years, the decades, we introduce more and more blockers into our bodies, substances like certain foods, for example, brown rice, which I'm going to explain here, and endocrine disrupting chemicals that pull our bodies away from thermo, away from perfect health. My mission is to help you get back to thermo, to put yourself back on the path to that endless energy and vitality once again. This video is just one small brick in the wall, but an important one nonetheless. So let's get to it. First, we're going to talk about where the brown rice myth comes from. Next, I'm going to talk about exactly why brown rice is unhealthy and you can make the decision for yourself. So first, where did the brown rice myth come from? You might remember back in the early 2000s when the whole whole grain health fad started blowing up. It seemed like you couldn't walk anywhere into any grocery store without seeing the words whole grain plastered all over every package and label. Bookstores were packed with new diet guru books proclaiming the health benefits of whole grains. You couldn't even turn on daytime television without either seeing a talk show or a morning show doing a segment on whole grains or seeing commercials for cereals, breads, and meal replacement bars singing the praises of whole grains. But where did this craze even come from? And most of us don't even think about it when things like this are happening, mostly because the fad or the craze is so pervasive that all the hearsay surrounding it masquerades as common knowledge. Everyone accepts it as a fact. This is propaganda at its finest. And for those of you who are skeptical about propaganda, just read Edward Bernays' book, Propaganda. And he invented mass control via modern propaganda. Population health propaganda is an extremely common form of mass control. Now, it was during this time that the brown rice myth was born. First, people started saying that brown rice is healthier than white rice due to the fact that it's a whole grain. Then the glycemic index started being used widely in health marketing, further demonizing white rice versus brown rice. And now with the massive demonization of simple carbohydrates, the brainwashing seems complete. Everyone who considers themselves health conscious will automatically choose brown rice over white rice. And what caused this whole grain fad to start? The answer, the US federal government. In 1999, the FDA issued a statement that allowed for the FDA approved health claim of the following. Diets rich in whole grain foods and other plant foods and low in saturated fats and cholesterol may help reduce the risk of heart disease. Giant corporations and marketers salivate over the FDA approved health claims, mostly because the masses of sheeple trust the FDA as a health authority. Why? Because they're told to. 
and the government trains us to bend at the knee from the time we're children in public schools. If the FDA approves it, it must be healthy, right? Well, how's that working out right now with opioids? So when the FDA issued the statement in 1999, every major big food corporation jumped all over it, especially General Mills, which is the company who actually lobbied for them to, to actually approve the claim in the first place. And within a year, every single grocery store in the US was saturated with whole grains. The TVs and the bookstores positioned all of the marketing and the masses of the general public took the bait hook, line, and sinker. What you're probably still wondering is, well, why is this a big deal? What makes brown rice unhealthy anyways? It can always be traced back to poisoning the general public with three things. One, heavy metals. Two, polyunsaturated fats. Three, endocrine disrupting chemicals. And brown rice has all three. Let's talk about first phytic acid. So first, brown rice is extremely high in a substance known as phytic acid. All the phytic acid is found in the bran hull, the non-digestible outer layer of the rice grain. Since white rice is characterized by the absence of the outer layer, white rice does not contain any phytic acid. Phytic acid is a highly potent anti-nutrient. It binds minerals in your body and leaches them out of your system. Anything that contributes to the widespread micronutrient deficiency epidemic is toxic and should be avoided like the plague. Phytic acid is a negatively charged ion at a broad pH range, and therefore chelates positively charged, vitally important minerals such as iron, zinc, magnesium, manganese, and copper. Now, these chelates are insoluble, making them completely unavailable to the body. Phytic acid also reduces the availability of key amino acids, namely anti-stress amino acids. In fact, many researchers consider phytic acid in the diet to be the key driver of micronutrient deficiencies outside of the actual lack of that nutrient intake. So soaking the rice is actually still not sufficient to remove phytic acid from the whole. The only way to get rid of the phytic acid in rice is to actually shuck off the outer layer. Asian populations for many centuries have consumed white rice, and before machinery was available, they would bring the rice through an extensive process to remove the hull. In Japan, for example, highly polished white rice was considered the food of the kings, the rich and the elite. Brown rice, on the other hand, was left for the peasants. So to sum this point up, the phytic acid in rice is only present in the bran, in the outer part of the rice. White rice does not have it. The brown rice is also filled with easily oxidized polyunsaturated fat oils, also not present in white rice, which we're gonna discuss right now. Who could think of such a horrible thing? Polyunsaturated fats. The outer layer of rice is rich in polyunsaturated fatty acids, making brown rice a toxic food for several reasons, which I'll explain here. I've talked at length about toxic polyunsaturated fats in my books, in my articles, in videos. However, I'll recap the main points here for you again. First, polyunsaturated fats cause hormonal imbalance. The most well understood effect of polyunsaturated fats on hormonal imbalance is their interference with the function of the thyroid gland. Polyunsaturated fats block thyroid hormone secretion, its movement in the circulatory system, and the response of tissues to the hormone. When the thyroid hormone is insufficient, the body becomes exposed to increased levels of estrogen. The thyroid hormone is essential for making protective hormones like progesterone and pregnenolone, so the production of these hormones drops significantly when anything interferes with the function of the thyroid. And when it comes to natural steroid hormone production like testosterone, we also see a sharp drop in T production with the consumption of polyunsaturated fats. This same effect has been seen over and over again in medical research measuring hormonal impact of different types of fatty acids. Second, polyunsaturated fats damage the human immune system. Vegetable oil solutions have actually been developed specifically for the purpose of knocking out the human immune system. Their effects are that well documented in the medical literature. And PUFAs are known to directly kill white blood cells in humans. Vegetable oil emulsions were used in an attempt to nourish cancer patients at one point, but it was quickly found that the PUFAs were actually suppressing their immune systems. The same products they took in which the vegetable oil is emulsified with water for intravenous injection are now being marketed and sold specifically for the purpose of suppressing immunity in patients who have had organ transplants. The presence of these toxic oils in foods such as brown rice has the same harmful effect on the immune system. Third, polyunsaturated fats cause oxidative damage. 
So oxidative damage is an imbalance between the production of free radicals and the ability of the body to counteract or detoxify their harmful effects through neutralization by antioxidants. The exposure of polyunsaturated fats to air actually causes that oil to go rancid, and this is called oxidation. And it's the same process that occurs when oil paint dries. Free radicals are produced in this process. This process is then accelerated at higher temperatures like cooking or you know, steaming, that sort of thing. The free radicals produced in this process react with parts of the cells such as molecules of DNA and protein and may become attached to those molecules causing abnormalities in the structure and the function. Oxidative damage in the body leads inevitably to the cytokines triggering an inflammatory response which man manifests itself in many different symptoms in people ranging from autoimmune disorders to hormonal imbalances to even more serious diseases and deficiencies such as Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, cancers and genetic mutations, chronic fatigue syndrome, atherosclerosis, heart attacks, and more. And the third main thing that's wrong with brown rice and why you should avoid it is arsenic. So in 2012, Consumer Reports released a warning against rice products due to the high levels of arsenic found in most of them, including brown rice, rice cereals, rice milks, rice cakes, crackers, and more. There was little to no arsenic actually found in white rice since all of the arsenic was contained in the outer hull of the brown rice, and they used brown rice to make all of these products. Where did all this arsenic come from? And why don't people know about this? Where is the FDA and the EPA on this one? Well, Consumer Reports specifically recommended the following. Our scientists are also asking regulators to prohibit agricultural practices that may lead to increases in arsenic in rice. First, the EPA should phase out the use of pesticides containing arsenic. Second, the USDA and the EPA should end the use of arsenic-laden manure as fertilizer. And third, the FDA should ban the feeding of arsenic-containing drugs and animal byproducts to animals. Dr. Chris Kresser explained the findings like this. Brown rice, on the other hand, has significantly more arsenic than white rice and should be avoided or consumed rarely. Some of the brown rice brands tested contain at least 50% more than the safe limit per serving, and a few even had nearly double the safe limit. Note that some of the worst offenders for arsenic are made from brown rice. Processed rice products like brown rice syrup, brown rice pasta, rice cakes, and brown rice crisps. These processed products are commonly consumed by those following a, quote, healthy, whole grain rich, or gluten free diet but they clearly pose a significant risk of arsenic overexposure, especially if a person eats more than one serving per day. Obviously, brown rice is not a food that should be a dietary staple or even eaten on a regular basis. The lowest levels of arsenic were found in white rice uh, between jasmine and basmati rice that was imported from another country, so it wasn't grown in the United States. Rinsing the rice, which is traditionally done in many cultures, further reduced the arsenic levels. For those of you who are wondering what's so bad about arsenic, you might be surprised to know it's actually a heavy metal and is toxic to the body at certain doses. The Center for Disease Control in the US knows very well how toxic arsenic is for the human body. They even say on their website, word for word, that arsenic is a confirmed human carcinogen. Arsenic causes cancer in humans. Yet the USDA, FDA, and EPA continue to do nothing about the high levels of arsenic in our food supply, specifically brown rice based whole grain health foods. They also continue to heavily use arsenic as a pesticide for cotton for all of our clothing, but that's a topic for another video. So let's recap. Brown rice is a toxic food that contains high amounts of a government admitted human carcinogen heavy metal, contains high amounts of phytic acid, which is well known to chelate vital micronutrients in the body, causing wide scale vitamin and mineral deficiencies in millions of people, and brown rice is extremely high in toxic polyunsaturated fats, which are documented in medical literature to damage thyroid hormone production and natural reproductive hormone production, damage the immune system, and massively increase oxidative stress in the body. Do you want to know what it is? The matrix is everywhere. It is all around us. Even now in this very room, you can see it when you look out your window or when you turn on your television. You can feel it when you go to work, when you go to church, when you pay your taxes. It is the world that has been pulled over your eyes to blind you from the truth. What truth? That you are a slave, Neo. 
Like everyone else, you were born into bondage, born into a prison that you cannot smell or taste or touch. A prison for your mind. Unfortunately, no one can be told what the Matrix is. You have to see it for yourself. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends, you wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill. You stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Remember, all I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Hey guys thanks so much for watching if you like this video give it a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel because i've got so much more content coming out for you to teach you exactly the truth about health related topics and what you can really do to empower your own life uh, and your own health so thanks for watching click on some other videos watch some other stuff and i'll see you around